So you have a, a number of Game Boys here, don't you? A few Game Boys, yes. Indeed. So uh, do I do I uh, infer from this that you might be a collector? Um, I, I have been called one of those, <laughs> also a hoarder, mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, other things. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, how many Game Boys do you have? Uh, I've lost count. Right. I have many Game Boys. Yeah. So, I mean, was there considerable variety? I mean, I know it's these, so this isn't just a Game Boy Light. This looks like seven different types of... Yeah, uh, so the Game Boy Light, these were only released in Japan. These are uh, all the ones that were released in Japan. There's seven different ones. Uh, there's actually another variation of this, which I actually left at home. Uh, this was the Famitsu Jelly Bean uh, release. This is the mail order box. Uh, this is actually rarer than the other version, which comes in the cardboard uh, blister pack. Um, and I believe there's a 5,000 of those <laughs> and a thousand of these, I forget, but it's like ridiculously rare. Um, these are numbered as well. Um, but this is one of my favorite collections because there's a finite number of them. Yeah. And, it's, and, and even though they're quite expensive, it's, it's possible to get them all. Yeah. So, I mean, is this true of all the other Game Boys? Are there different colors, different cases, different... Oh, very much so. So Nintendo were well known, obviously, for all the different Game Boy colors. The original Game Boy, obviously, in the original DMG, which is an off-white gray, uh, yeah. they released their Play It Loud series, which is black, green, uh, red, many other colors. Oh, I didn't bring... I have a Manchester, <laughs> I have a Manchester United Game Boy. Oh, right, it's, okay. It's quite limited edition. Um, I don't like football at all, but as a collector's item, it's, it's, it's quite rare to get yeah. out of. So do you know how many different varieties there are? Many. <laughs> many? Okay. I couldn't give you the exact number. Um, like, Nintendo just released tons of them. Um, from all the different Game Boys, uh, the Game Boy Pockets, the Game Boy Lights, the Game Boy uh, Advance, uh, SP, mm. every single one of them has a large There's variety. There's a variation. Yeah. Some more rare than others. Yeah. During the break, I couldn't help but admire these gorgeous little tins. So these have games in, yes? Indeed, yes. So mm. Hudson, Hudson Soft uh, released these nine little tins uh, with their games in it. These are, I believe, they're also available in um, uh, regular boxes. Yeah. But they come in these tiny, little, cute little tins. Uh, the little cartridges inside. Uh, the little manual. And they're just that the cutest. Is so cute. They're, they're, so they're sweet. the cutest. No, love it, love it. They, um, yeah, again, there's only nine of them, so it's something so you it's can nice, collect. So it's a nice, fine art. So where do you get these things? Uh, so the majority of them are from eBay, um, mm -hmm. uh, which probably isn't the best place to get them because uh, that's where it's, it's most expensive. Yes. Um, it was many years before I found out about things like Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lot of trading on going on there. And I recently found out about uh, Japanese Yahoo auctions. <laughs> which is a very, very dangerous habit, isn't it? I've discovered that too. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, the joy of buying anything from uh, from uh, j directly from Japan, from Yahoo in Japan, is uh, then it has to be shipped to you, and then you have to pay import duties. So I, I always make this mistake. I see something that looks like a bargain, think, oh, that's only thirty pounds. I buy that, mm -hmm. and it's thirty pounds to be shipped to me, and thirty pounds customs charges. So now it's oh, ninety pounds. But you're also missing also the proxy charge. Oh, and the proxy charge because you, you know, can't. I can't read Japanese. Can you read Japanese? I can't. Um, Google Translate does. Uh, yeah. Fair go. But you're not allowed to bid on anything if you're not in Japan. So you need to use a proxy and then the proxy will charge you uh, an extra fee on top of that. Yeah. But it is where you get the really good stuff. You know, if, if you're a, a, an addictive collector, you know, that's, that's the mother load is, is so on there. I found um, it's only worth using a proxy in Japan auctions if it's something you can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, or it's... Um, ridiculously expensive normally. Yeah. Uh, anything in between, you may as well go elsewhere. Because uh, by the time you rack up the charges, you, you're not saving any money whatsoever. Mm -hmm. and have, you, have you gone to Japan to seek out rare yes. and unusual things? So I went to Japan about five years ago for a friend's wedding. Yeah. And I had a shopping list that of things I must get. Uh, otherwise, I'm not coming home. <laughs> um, one of them was uh, the uh, Famicom anniversary Game Boy SP. Um, this is also only available to uh, Club Mario members and uh, is uh, a Game Boy Advance SP in the livery of a Famicom. Oh, so it's a pearlescent top mm -hmm. and it has uh, uh, <laughs> the top bottom. Because um, I 
didn't even know about that before because I, I got this one and everyone thought, oh, have you got the Famicom SP? I'm like, yeah, I've got Famicom SP. This, this, I've got it it's right here. Um, and they go, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, <laughs> no. no, no. It was an even rarer or more expensive version. Yeah, so that one oh, looks similar. <laughs> but it doesn't have the gold plating. Uh, so, so a white top rather than the red top. Um, so I got that um, in, in Japan. Um, then I got back and then someone saw it and said, that's lovely. Do you have the Hot Mario box that goes with it? <laughs> And I'm sorry, what? Which is this box here? That box there. So I spent another couple of years hunting down. So uh, you would have bought, this would have come in this box. Indeed. So, so a box inside a box. A box is in a box. So as you can see, this box is in a box. And it also comes with a tiny little Mario, uh, which is uh, the Game Boy Advance version of Mario, or the first Mario. <laughs> um, oh, but that is cruel. So it took me some time to uh, track down. I, also in Japan, I picked up a PC Engine LT. Mm -hmm. Which is um, so that's the one a bit like the SP opens up with the screen on it. That's yeah, exactly. the one. Yeah, so it's a PC engine in a little laptop configuration, mm -hmm. um, which is ridiculously rare and constantly goes up in price. So um, um, is it easy to find this sort of stuff if you actually go to Japan? Not that that's crossing my mind at all. But <laughs> um, I mean, are there shops that specialise in this? Is the places you can go? Yeah. Yes. 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 No. So I said if you had gone ten years ago, it would have been worth going. Right. Because uh, prices were low and you could go there and go to places like Akihabara uh, and pick up some really good bargains. But now collecting is a very well-known thing. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. Prices are through the roof and uh, the shops in Akihabara know this. And mm. if you want a good deal in Japan, you have to go to all the second shops out of town. You have to go well, hunting. You need to go out to the suburbs. Hunting. So they have what are called hard offs. Mm -hmm. which is like a cash converters, I guess. Yeah. Um, and there's other second shops and you need to go find them in the suburbs and stuff and cross your fingers that someone in a suburb somewhere has yeah. handed over a rare item that you can pick up. And that nobody body. else has spotted it first. I know. It's so not only that. do you have to get to Japan, you have to then go out into the, the suburbs and the small towns yeah. to actually hunt these things. So your retro hunting is, uh, so I would say it's a full-time, almost a full-time job. I, I know <laughs> the, the traders on, on, on Facebook and things like that, that that's what they do. They go yeah. out hunting for you and they bring back things and they sell them on um, to, to buyers and collectors. Uh, but I know, I appreciate how much time and effort they put into doing this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when people get upset, like, oh, there's this much markup. And like, well, if you want to buy a plane ticket, go hunting yourself and then get your bargain, yeah. uh, you go, go, work, go ahead. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's a full time thing. So, I mean, obviously you don't just collect Game Boys. No, I don't collect Game Boys. So, my quest um, at some point became collect one of every console ever made in its box. <laughs> so, uh, not, 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 not a small aim, not a simple aim. No. Well, it, it, I, when I first started, I thought it was simple because um, <laughs> I got to about 75 consoles. Um, well, there can't be more than that, surely. And I thought, yeah, it can't be yeah. any more than that. Um, uh, I thought maybe uh, there are probably about 100 consoles out there, variations and stuff. So uh, there are fine lines I've drawn. So I won't collect anything that does have, has, uh, doesn't have changeable media. So it has to be either a cartridge or a disc. So no Pong No shapes. Pong clones, because right. there are a lot of those. No, that's madness. <laughs> madness that way, yeah. Um, it has to be a, uh actual retail release. Yeah. So you have to have been buy it in a shop. Um, so no prototypes, yeah. uh, no hotel systems, a right. few of those, uh, no arcade systems as it were. Um, so yeah, it has to be a retail release. Um, uh, it has to be a, a physically different uh, variation. So the Nintendo N64, mm -hmm. for example, came out in many, many different colors, yeah. but they were all the same machine. Pretty much. Although you're not following those rules here, are you? Oh, this is a, a different world. <laughs> Game, Boy, Game Boy is a pet. pet oh, okay. Uh, pet, so, uh, so Game Boys, you're allowed to do that. The other systems, same. you're trying to. Yeah. Only if the machines are, are technically different. So the N64, the only variation that classically uh, classifies as a different variation is the poke, it's the Pikachu one. Mm -hmm. The Pikachu has the different plastic molding. It's physically a different shape. Yeah. So in my uh, classification, that counts. That right. Okay. So yeah. So if you think. Uh, drawing those lines, um, I was at 75 consoles. I thought I wasn't very far off. Uh, I am now, I think, six years on from that much. Yeah, about six years on. I'm now 230 consoles plus and <laughs> still not finished. What percentage of those are Japanese? Um, I would say 
close to 50% are Japanese. Right. It's a large chunk. I was wondering why, why, why Japan was such a prolific maker of, uh, of consoles to be, you know, over half the collection. Yeah. It, does, it does seem that way. Um, you know, we were trying to think if we have had a Made in America or a Made in Europe event, yeah. the, you know, the number of consoles would be quite small, whereas Japan... Hmm. I think, obviously, in, in Europe, uh, the mm. Mac computer was king. Yes. Uh, consoles, not so much. Uh, they had, we had a, a fair share of consoles. I have a good number of European consoles as well, um, mm. which are usually actually clones of American consoles. Yes. Um, uh, and, and to be honest, my American collection is quite impressive as well. Oh, so maybe uh, we will do Made in America. Made in America would work because yeah. uh, if you think of the Atari were there, yeah. uh, you had uh, Magnavox um, and all the early consoles. So looking at early consoles, uh, America has a, a fair share of them. Mm. Although it does seem that the Japanese took over. I mean, I'm, yeah, was it um, Jack Tramiel famously said, you know, that the Japanese are coming and he was very worried about yeah. Japanese computers taking away Commodore's business. I mean, in fact, that didn't really happen, but it did happen yeah. in the world of consoles. That's where the Japanese came in. They never really made great inroads with the home computers, yeah. but you know, they swept, swept yeah. away the whole... For sure. Um, uh, obviously, America had, had their console crash, um, which didn't mm. affect us as much because we had mac computers, but yeah. um, until Nintendo came along and revived their console uh, market, uh, consoles were pretty much dead in the water. Yeah. So, I mean, you, so how many consoles do you say you've got? I'd say about, about 230. And how many more do you know of that you don't have? Uh, off the top of my head, I would say it's about 30 or 40 that I don't have. Wow. That I know of. Right. Um, I'm constantly finding new yeah, ones. And the joy of collecting is you keep finding things that you... you <laughs> Literally last week, I found a karaoke console in Japan yeah. called a Kiss Sight. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it's, looks like a white and orange Dreamcast. But with karaoke, uh, karaoke ports in it, and um, uh, I've ordered one now. So it's oh, okay. <laughs> they're not very expensive. But I, the, luckily, yeah. that that one wasn't difficult to find. But there's like a, some of the earlier ones are ridiculously hard to find. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the um, uh, the cassette vision uh, mm. by, uh, by Epoch uh, before the NES. Uh, Epoch made a yeah. lot of their. Oh, which was really cute. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was a good well, they, they made they made uh, the cassette vision, the super cassette vision, and the cassette vision junior, which I have all three of those. Yeah, but they although all... they didn't use cassettes, they used cartridges. Well, in Japan, the yeah. translation was cartridge ah, was cassette. Right. Uh, so it's not cassette. It's, it's yeah, as you say, it's cartridge. Yes. But they also released a pink, all for for girls cassette, <laughs> uh, super cassette vision. It comes yeah. in a briefcase and um, because girls like them in briefcases. Of course. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've never seen one for sale, ever. Right, okay. But I would really like one of those in my So is that top of your list? Is, is there the, oh. the machine you go to bed dreaming of? You know, one day, in the morning, I'll wake up and it will be there in my eBay um, um, search results. Uh, weirdly, it's, like, it's not high on my list, but it's obviously in there because it's one of the ones I haven't ever seen. Mm. All the other ones, as rare as they are, I've seen them come up. You know up, of that, yeah. And they've come up once or twice and they go for crazy money or, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the rare as it is, but you do see them. Yeah. And that is one, one of the few that I've never, ever seen. The other problem I have finding are, are Korean consoles. Right. Korea, I actually went to Korea to find some of them. Okay. Uh, and I couldn't find any, any of them. But so, they are, you know they exist. I know they exist, yeah. but uh, Korea went through a voltage change mm -hmm. uh, from um, 240 to 100, I believe. Um, and because of that, a lot of electronics got thrown away. Oh, good So heavens. I feel like a lot of the yeah. early Korean consoles are just gone. And are there any other countries? I mean, from um, a microcomputer collector point of view, I've discovered Russia made yeah. computers, and the whole of the Eastern Bloc made all these computers, mostly Spectrum clones, but not entirely. So suddenly there's a whole world of things mm. to spend my money on that I was previously unaware of. Have you had those moments? Have you discovered, I know Brazil is a country that I've discovered makes computers that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Are there kind of untapped markets? Oh, for sure. Um, there are probably a bunch, of, a bunch of consoles I've never even heard of. Um, hmm. I have the Brazilian console. Um, oh, name escapes me right now. Uh, nope, I have to come back to that. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a Brazilian console out there, which is which was um, you had to download games to it though, um, which kind of it's I, I'm, it's in the grey line in my collection. Yeah, because uh, it does have physical media, um, and uh, the Korean consoles though were all uh, clones of uh, Japanese consoles, but yeah. in different casing. Mm -hmm. So 
they have their own PC engine, they have um, oh, okay. uh, their yeah. own versions of MSXs and stuff yeah. like that. Um, the one country that surprised me is, uh, uh, oh, it's going to escape me now, but the Super ACAN, it's from Taiwan. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. It's from Taiwan, and, and if you think of places to buy consoles, yeah. Taiwan's not high on your list, but they made yeah, they a Super made ACAN, uh, which was, uh, I guess, after the Super Nintendo, so sort of between 16 and 32-bit era. Yeah. And they're pretty rare. I've, I have one, it's just finding the games for it are almost impossible. Yeah, okay. So what, what's the machine that you do every morning you hope will come up on eBay? What's the, what's the thing that will make you go, <gasps> I've got to sell my house and buy this? <clears throat> um, so there's probably two at the moment that are, are, are really high on my list to get. Uh, one is the uh, Sega all-in-one PC, Sega Terra Drive, which oh, we yeah. managed to have one the other week. Um, uh, here. Which yes, we did have one here. Yes. Um, in its box and the thing. And so mm. I've seen them come up, but never in the boxes. And to right. see one in its box is like, <laughs> <laughs> will you Will you buy something outside of a box if there's no other way of getting hold of it? Because uh, you said at the beginning that you tried to get everything in the box. It's... Yeah, so it, it depends on how rare it is and how much I want it. Um, so my Super Famicom TVs mm. uh, are, are unboxed. Um, to, because to find a box one of those is, is, is near nigh impos impossible. I've only ever yeah. seen it for sale once in a box. Um, but so it's boxes for a big thing like a television. It's not something you keep, is yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. You, you throw out big So I've, I've kind of bent rules slightly in yeah. that if it's a large media device where its primary function is to be media, so a TV mm -hmm. or a, a hi-fi system, um, the box isn't as important. Because the box to me is quite boring. It's a little bit a brown, yeah. plain box. Uh, whereas, whereas I can see why the boxes are actually an integral part of collecting the small things because actually they come in really colourful boxes with interesting graphics. 100%. Um, for me, the boxes are so important. They're, they're a huge part of nostalgia. Uh, it's what I remember yeah. going to the store, seeing the boxes on the shelves and stuff. So th there's so much nostalgia in the boxes. And someone took the time to design these boxes. Mm. Someone, you know, they're, they're a capsule. They're uh, of time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, I can see the I can see the appeal because yeah, the packaging is is half the fun with these small. One hundred percent. And even uh, taking stuff out of the box and putting it in the box is is, is fascinating. I, yeah. I, there's a million unboxing videos on YouTube, and people <laughs> don't quite understand them most of the time. But sometimes, if you watch them unbox something that you're quite passionate about, it's it's quite satisfying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the 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 Sega Mega Drive. Terra Drive PC is one I want, mm. and it's closely followed by the Mega Drive Iowa Boombox. So it's oh, a wow. little bo Boombox by Iowa. <laughs> There's uh, nodding at the back. Like, mm, yeah, yeah, I'd like one of those. Which yeah. is, uh, yeah, exactly. So it, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a horrendous little uh, <laughs> Boombox, and it yeah. has the ability to play Mega Drive games and Mega CD games. And like, I have uh, at least 15 different ways to play Mega Drive games. Mm. Um, I don't need another one, but it's... <laughs> oh, if we're talking about need, I mean, you don't. Yeah, let's let's not use that as a criteria. But yeah, it's it, it's it's one of the the consoles that uh, yeah. it, it just never comes up. Right. And let alone in its box. And talking about crossover devices, what's this beast over here? So over there, I don't know. If you probably can't see it in the camera, but uh, over there is the Super Famicom TV. Should I bring it over? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's bring it over. So I mentioned it earlier. This is Super Famicom S. F1. Um, it's a combination uh, from Sharp. It's a TV all in one with a Super Famicom. So you play your 16 bit Super Nintendo games. Um, these were released in two models the 14 inch and 21 inch. I have both of them. Um, <laughs> I've got to catch them all. Uh, uh, and, and I remember seeing the article for this in, I think, in CVG magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was 92. Two, I see the article, and I just like that was incredible. It just blew my yeah. mind. I thought oh, I want one of those, and then I got my first one of these. I'm gonna say maybe three years ago now, mm -hmm. and so it was, it was quite a long yeah. uh, time, period of time before I actually getting one. Uh, you can see here we're plugging in the Game Boy Super Game Boy Two, so you can play Game Boy games as well. So it's quite a fun way to play Game Boy games. Okay, oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice, nice. So, I mean, you're looking at all the packaging and stuff here. Um, the game you're doing at the moment is, I presume, for online release only. But if you were going to do something for the Game Boy, would you, would you do it? Would you package it up? Would you get all that sort of stuff oh, done as well? 100%. So, one of the pipe dreams is if the game does well, so the game we're making, Mau Mau Castle, if it does well, we want to 
pull it and release it on every single system ever made. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I, every single system. Well, as many as I can. I'd like to see the version of my Sharp MZ eighty k. For sure, I would love okay, to. Okay, you do that. But so I, I show you the video of Space Harrier. Yes. On yeah. The, uh, no, we still got to get that going. On, in, yeah. On, on, on early Sharp, and it's incredible. It's, it's on, mm. the, on ASCII block character, and it's terrible. Yeah. But it's it's recognizable and it's playable. Mm. Um, I understand Lemmings is the most ported game ever. Yeah, it could be. I, I was wondering if it's that or Doom. Um, but, or Tetris, or Tetris actually, yeah. We've but, got, uh, I, yeah. I, think, I think officially it's Lemmings. Okay. Uh, for official releases. Um, so you want to beat that record? I want to beat Lemmings. <laughs> I, 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 want to be in, I, I would love to be in a position where I could pay people who are uh, experts on yeah. their computers to make it. So I, I want to get the best Commodore 64 Pro Coder, I want mm -hmm. to get the best Spectrum Pro Coder, and I want them to make... Get these people out of retirement. And one port. last thing. Then, yeah. Yeah. But can you just put Mama over? And do yeah. It? yeah. So. So if you're going to do that, you're going to do the physical packaging and the cartridges. Yes. Oh, fantastic. That's a pipe, it's a pipe dream, but it would be quite yeah. nice to do. Oh, wonderful. Right, uh, does anyone else have any questions for, for Quang? About three weeks ago, I was bidding on an R-Zone PDA, which is one of the rarest versions of the Tiger R-Zone. It is. Presumably because um, all the rest of them are now burning in hell where they belong. <laughs> um, but basically, um, I was bidding up to 25 quid. It was a 12 day auction, no one had bid in at all. I then had to go to the doctors, and when I came back, some fucker bid up to 25 pound 99 and won it. Now, <laughs> was that you? <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks on, genuinely, I am li like so angry about that. Has there ever been any instances where you have missed out on something amazing like that? Or just something well, obviously the other <laughs> shit, but you know, it's, it's rare and interesting. Yeah. Has there been anything that has made you think, oh my god, I'm going to push something over? Can you tell me? So yeah, so um, Sarah's question was. Has there ever been a, an eBay bid where, well, an auction bid where I've mm. just missed out and it, it's, it's maybe fuming? Uh, the answer, short answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we um, could all agree with that. With all yeah, us I think all yeah. have been there. Um, I've been in many bidding wars, which, mm. is, which is ridiculous because um, when you're in a bidding war, um, you don't think straight. It's, it's no. all that. Yeah. You, I, you, you, I want this, and, and you want this, and and you can keep persuading yourself. Well, it's only going to be another five pounds more than the three hundred it's already got to. So I'll go to three hundred and five, <laughs> three hundred and ten. So it's only another five so pounds more. The biggest <laughs> biggest bidding war I got into was for the ClickoVision Telstar Arcade. It's oh, a <laughs> it's a it's a odd console from ClickoVision, uh, which is a triangle console. It has three sets of controls. One side is a steering wheel, other side is a light gun, the other side is a joystick. I think, for a car. Yeah, steering wheel, mm. yeah. yeah like and um, uh, I've been looking for one for a long time. Um, they just don't come up uh, boxed or unboxed. Uh, just didn't come up. One finally came up, and it was a sealed Telstar Arcade. <sighs> We've got to have that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not... A collector that goes off the sealed stuff because I like to play mm. my stuff. Yeah. Um, but because it had never come up, I had been yeah. searching for a good few years, I bid on it. Um, and there's another guy, I actually know who he is. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, have you been in bidding wars where you know where the other I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know who was to start with, to be right. during the war. Um, but uh, I know of him and I know that he collects sealed consoles. That's his thing. Mm. And I, did, but I didn't know he was bidding on this. Um, and uh, we bid back and forth. So the, 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 um, the best thing about eBay in the UK, auction sites in the UK, is that you have a finite time to bid. It ends when it ends, mm. you set the time. So you bid, you bid, bid, and zero seconds, whoever wins, wins at the end of that time. Uh, we bid back and forth, uh, and I finally outbid them at, I think it peaked at, Thirteen hundred dollars mm. for a sealed console. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I had planned to only spend maybe eight hundred at the most, yeah. but that's what happens when you go into a bidding war. Yeah, because you're in it then, aren't you? You can't. You're in it, and, yeah. and and things when you're winning, and then you see the time goes, and they and they hesitate. There's a moment when when they hesitate and they don't bid against you. And you think I've got this. They're yeah. not going to bid, and then it goes down a few seconds, and they go bid. And you go no. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, and then then you have like five seconds left to decide if you're going to let this go yeah. or you're going to bid on it. And, 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 and eBay make some... it easy. I don't know if you, if you do it on your phone, then you just have this button to add five pounds. Yeah. So you don't even have to think. think. You don't even have to work at this tap. Tap. Yeah. And that button until it's and yours. And the, the thing with eBay is the, the language they use. 
Mm. It's you won. Yes. Like you've won something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh wait, you have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really yeah, won no, anything. No, you, you lost. Really. But uh, like I said, the best thing about e- eBay mm. in the UK is that it has a finite time. Whereas uh, I don't know if you mm. found out, but when you bid for stuff in Japanese Yahoo auctions, oh yeah, it adds time. Every time someone bids on something, it adds another five so minutes. It, it can keep going on forever. Yeah. So I got into a bidding war with someone over the Laser Active in its box with the Sega pack and the Peace Engine pack. Uh, and that went for crazy money, and I, we bid back and forth, and every time I thought I had it, it went down to like 10 seconds, and then they would bid again, and give me another mm. five minutes. So I'd wait till a minute, bid again, and then, okay, cause wait. And I was actually, that day, I was out at, at the beach with my family, uh, my brothers, <laughs> my, my, my nephews, and we were all having a good time. I was like, and I had to keep running, rushing up off the beach to walk to the, the near, get a signal on my phone to check if I had one. And yeah. every time I went back, he had outbid me. I'm like, mm. Oh, yeah. so, I've done this over romantic meals, it's like, but my phone's going, I hear the eBay, <laughs> Shh, stop, stop talking. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was mm. quite frustrating to, to keep being outbid, but eventually, obviously, I managed to win the mm. bid, but at a huge cost over what I originally wanted to spend. Yeah. My credit card hates me, <laughs> it really, really hates me. Um, I've not, I, I'm not supposed to buy anything more for at least another year, I reckon. Mm. Uh, I bought the, the, the KISS site karaoke because it, it cost me $10. $10. So yeah, I, I that's, could, that's could, fair enough. I could justify that. It barely that. counts. But yeah. it's nothing, I can't, I'm not allowed to buy anything big anymore. And since I, I put that restriction on, a few consoles have come up boxed, like the Iowa Boombox came mm. up in its box. And I, I, I can't bid. I just... Oh, such self control. I'm impressed, though. I bet I, I basically don't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Until I, I sell something, so I have various that I can sell. Yeah. But um, until I have the spare collateral, I can't, uh, no. I physically just can't do it. Um, so that's one thing, actually, uh, I, I want to talk about for collecting mm. is all the stuff is well, all well and good and, and they have memories, but I'm now collecting stuff that I have no emotional attachment to. I bought all the Nintendos, I bought all the Spectrums mm. and, and stuff that I grew up with. Now I'm buying stuff for the sake of collecting. And weirdly, the, the joy is actually in the collecting, the hunting, the finding, the yeah. bidding, and, and, and the acquiring. That's where the joy is. Mm. I, would, yeah, I would agree with that. It... Um, so we had uh, Made in Japan last week and I brought a bunch of consoles with me for people to play. Uh, and that's like the first time they ever get, um, got to be played on. Mm. And it, that's actually, I've, I've, I found uh, a, a really nice part of it. I get to share my collection with people and I get to see them played because um, it's all well good being collected, but when you seal stuff away, uh, away from their primary function, which is to be played, it's kind of sad. It is. I mean, I love you, you bought a Tommy Pewter, which is a machine. I have, but mine's broken and his isn't. <laughs> so I actually got to play with it and it was the first time it came out of its box. It was, yeah. it was you know, it was basically brand new. That was lovely to get to uh, plug that in and see it work, which is always a bit of a risk for something that old as well. It didn't go bang, nothing, nothing went wrong. Yeah, but... so I also did, did this for uh, Play Expo um, hmm. a little while back uh, for the Blackpool and Manchester event. And I brought a bunch of consoles with me and this is the first time they've ever actually been out of their box. And, yeah. and uh, Andy, who runs the event, was unboxing them and going, have you ever used this before? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's the first time. And yeah. uh, it, I think it shook him a little bit. He just assumed that they were, mm. that they were played. And like I said, as a collector, um, my joy becomes through collecting them now. Yeah. And, but I found another outlet, the joy now comes through letting people play them, watching people. And the, 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 the there's so much joy in watch people go point at us and go, oh, I know what that is. Yes. Oh, I've never seen one of those in life. Yeah. Oh, I never thought I'd see one of those. And it's, it's, it's incredible. It is. I mean, that's why, you know, I've, I've enjoyed doing the Made in Japan and bringing all my stuff last week as well. So uh, we'll have to do more of these. For sure. Yes. Um, for, for, actually, for you, uh, is there anything that you're after that you really, really want to collect? <sighs> From the Japanese side of things, I want a Fujitsu FM77AV. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if, if anyone in the crowd wants to send him, yeah, in fact, it's, it's, my, it's actually it's not even my birthday soon. But if anyone is <laughs> you know, putting a list together for things to get me for my birthday, I'll say it again: Fujitsu FM seventy seven AV, twin sixty eight oh nines, gorgeous machine. I've never even touched one. I've never seen one in this country, and I would really, really like one. So, so I, I understand hmm. there's a, a IY manufacturer boombox in France in the shop somewhere. Oh yeah. Uh, um, uh, so if I want to pop over to France and pick me up, <laughs> pick me up 
That'd be yeah, great. I think you know what to get us for Christmas now, yeah. okay? Right, well, well thank you very much. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Um, any other questions? Anyone else? Any other questions? What's your favourite Game Boy to actually play? Um, so it, uh, I was asked which is my favourite Game Boy to play. So I have a modified Game Boy, which is probably over there, um, from a gentleman called Retro High. He is a genius with a soldering iron. Uh, he managed to cram a Game Boy SP uh, 101, uh, so with a backlit screen, into a regular DMG case. He wired it all up, makes all the controls work, takes cartridges, um, he has a rechargeable battery, the volume works, the brightness works. Um, genius, and it, it, it's, it's a, a great really sweet play. thing. I don't know where it's. Is that it in it's there? It's inside there, yeah. Yeah, you might just want to yeah. show that to the camera. It's a. Uh, so uh, it has all the retro styling, but a beautiful, yeah. beautiful so display. It, the, the, the DMG itself, uh, it's so nostalgic, and it's a huge brick, but it fits really well in the hands. Um, the game color has a soft spot for me because it's obviously where I was programming, but the DMG is is just so classic. I, I'm wearing my DMG T-shirt. Um, <laughs> Uh, and but to be able to play it with a color screen uh, and be able to see the screen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a bit of a treat, isn't it? <clears throat> it's quite a big deal, you know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, uh, no motion mm. blur. It's the best, it's the best color screen you can get. Um, although now um, there are many mods you can get. Uh, there's the McWill, um, the, the Ben Ben, and somewhere more in America. I can't remember the name of them. Western something other. Uh, they also have dropping kind of screens, but they're for the game with colors. Um, so be able to be able to play color games on the old DMG mm -hmm. casing, that's something quite special. Yeah. And so, can it run all games? Um, yes, yeah, so it runs all game with uh, black and white and color games. Yeah. Uh, it theoretically could play a game with advanced game, but the slot no longer will fit. Oh, because it's been it modified. Needs, it needs to be right, raised. Yeah. Also, the screen border uh, wouldn't fit the width of the screen, so it, right. it would be covered by the thing. The thing so. Yeah, this is probably my favourite Game Boy. Mm, a lovely machine. What was the most expensive Game Boy? <laughs> <laughs> so the question there was, uh, what was my f most expensive Game Boy? Um, yeah, by far it would be the Hot Mario. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Famicom Anniversary Edition, because obviously... I so I presume you didn't, have, you didn't just buy the box, you had to buy a whole new yeah. machine to get the box. Exactly, so oh, uh, right. obviously I bought that first, I thought that was the one I wanted. Then told me, someone told me there was an anniversary edition, so I had to go hunt that down. I went to Japan to get this, uh, paid a crazy amount of money for that. And it's and still not the right got machine. Got home and told, <laughs> hot Mario box. So spent hours, hours? No, spent months searching for the hot Mario box. Um, and then trying to get it for a reasonable price. I managed to buy it through Yahoo Auctions again because mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't showing up on, on regular eBay. Yeah. Um, which means now I have two of these. One of these needs to go at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I try not to keep two of uh, two of things. I try to keep one of each because uh, I feel it's a little unfair for the rest of the community. I sold my second Vectrex. I sold my second Panasonic Q. Um, I used to have three Commodore GSs at one point. Uh, I saw, Three. But I saw two. Four too many. So if the man with eight <laughs> Game Boy lights. <laughs> but they're in different. All different. Yeah. All different. <laughs> All different. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, this is by far the most expensive one I, I, I paid for. Dare I ask? Um, I don't recall because after all the, the, that having the, a blank now? It's after the tax and after the oh, fees. Yeah. I'm going to put a rough guess at just over a grand for a Game Boy. <gasps> Gasps. <laughs> yeah, just over a grand. That's more expensive than my first car. <laughs> Good thing I don't collect cars. <laughs> <laughs> Sealed in box. Um, talk about collecting actually. Um, so uh, I know I collect consoles as well, but I did for a while collect games mm -hmm. for PC Engine, uh, Sega Saturn, and Game Boy. Uh, but those got really expensive very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've sold off most of my Saturn collection and, and um, I've been selling off my gamer collection. This game here is Zas, uh, Z-A-Z, uh, Z-A-S. Uh, it's a Japanese um, shoot 'em up And this regularly goes for easily $500. I just seen the price on top of this. Uh, it's 35,000 yen, so mm. about $35. Bought that. Yeah. But now it's easily $500 easily. Well, the problem is with 
rare and unusual games. They're normally rare and unusual because nobody bought them, and nobody bought them because they often weren't very good. So there is this <laughs> cruel sort of thing that you're, you're spending a vast amount of money on games that are rarely Weirdly, that good. Weirdly, this is a great game. Oh, is it? It's okay, one of the best so... shoot ups on Game Boy. Um, it just was never released over here. Uh, also, okay. it's reset end of the life. So again, a lot of time right. people have moved on. Uh, this one over here, Magical Chase. Um, it's uh, a game that's also available on PC Engine. It's also very expensive on PC Engine as well. Um, this is easily over three hundred dollars. Wow! For the right. shoot 'em up, um, and then a bunch of other ones. I, I know, I know, like uh, games like Spud's Adventure uh, go for a grand or so these days. No, well, game game. <laughs> That's a terrible game, yeah. Uh, but something like Shantae, it's a great game of game. It's now pushing a thousand pounds easily um, in this box. And um, I and I wish I never stopped collecting in the box because it's made my life hell. Mm. Uh, buying stuff outside of the box is so much easier. Yeah. Um, as a collector, I would say don't stop. No, don't do the boxes. Box stuff. That's no. Yeah. But again, uh, the boxes are so nostalgic. Yeah, they so are. For me, I must admit, for these small, I mean, for the micro, sometimes the boxes are interesting. Sometimes they're just dull cardboard boxes. Yeah. But yeah, I can see the attraction. The packaging here is lovely. Uh, I'm going to show you this one. Uh, this isn't a rare game, but this is quite a game. No, this is X uh, on the uh, Game Boy. Uh, this was programmed. This is uh, basically line polygons. Uh, on the Game Boy, and it's programmed by the guys who made Star Fox. So before Star Fox came out, this is their sort of, sh sort of showcase to see, show, show what they could do on Nintendo hardware. This isn't even an accelerated cartridge, but it's one of the very few Game Boy games that has uh, 3D polygons on it, which is very cool. And as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier in my talk, uh, doing lines on the Game Boy isn't easy because it's a tile-based system. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I also want to show you customs. So the Game Boy market is big on customs. So these are Game Boys where people have modified them, um, used different colors, different casing. This is uh, one. So this wasn't released looking like no. this. No. So this is one by JBit Retro. It has a, a little, uh, little Metroid Mega Man in there, um, which is a nice look thing. Uh, there's a company called Rose Rose Color Gaming, who do these replica type boxes, so they make the boxes as well. Right. Um, this is a DMG styled uh, Game Boy Advance. So the lovely box uh, with manuals and stuff. Uh, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how it came, it came uh, with a front light originally. But yeah, so that's now uh, in, in the DMG colorway, which obviously mm. was never Officially yeah. released, so they've all, they've paid to have this manufactured. And um, so I think this one's a paint job. Sprayed. Right. Um, the buttons are uh, cast, yeah. molded. Um, so there are different ways of producing them. Mm. Some better than others, but the Game Boy market has uh, a huge custom uh, right. scene, which is amazing. And are you going to collect those as well? Uh, it's a few. I own <laughs> I own a few just because they're cool. Yeah. Um, and um, the DMG ones I'm a big fan of. I have a, a DMG. Uh, colorway for every model, right? Um, mainly because this is my favorite colorway. Uh, if I show you over there, and this is a Game Boy Micro, which is so cute. But this is with the Game Boy yeah. uh, faceplate. Um, it also has the cast buttons. So most of the time, you can't get these buttons in this color. They're only available in black. So to make the buttons like this, you have to have them produced. And they're produced in very small amounts. Um, so, as a custom is, that's quite yeah. rare on its own. Are you insured? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't, yeah, so insuring this stuff is weird because obviously it's not like regular antiques. Hmm. They have a value, and like, I'm sure the, the Mona Lisa is insured uh, for a certain amount of money, but once the Mona Lisa is gone, it's gone. Hmm. You couldn't get a replacement. Yeah. And again, with old stuff, over time, it, it, the numbers are yeah. diminishing. And also, it's difficult to prove replacement value for some things. Yeah. So f for me to get a replacement, uh, so the Dreamcast TV, yeah. for example, uh, one recently sold on eBay for four grand. I'm going to say four thousand. Hmm. I think. That's not why I paid for mine. Um, but for me to get another one, if I lost it, it got stolen or broken, whatever, what is the cost? Yeah. 
what do you insure it at? So yeah, I, ha I have house insurance and, and for my stuff, hmm. which I've declared as retro stuff, but it's... it's I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I haven't even thought about it, yeah. Although I, I've become quite pragmatic about the whole thing and like, hmm. it's just stuff at the end of the day. Yeah. It's stuff I like, it's stuff um, I enjoyed, and a lot of it in the a lot of it is in the collecting, as I said before, it's in the memories, it's in, it's mm. in the hunt, and it's in looking for it's, it's stories. Uh, if it goes, it goes. It's it's you mm. know, it's uh, it's just stuff at the end yeah. of the day. Um it's, it'll be annoying. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> annoying, yes, I think it would be, yes. <laughs> annoying. Um but yeah, it's, uh, I said that all the joy now comes from finding them and watching people play them. Mm. And that and that's happened and I've seen people enjoy them so they've had a value to me and yeah it's been great yeah I think that's it well thank you very much it's a pleasure. thank you thank you